Hello everyone, you're welcome back. Today we are going to be illustrating this gown. It's a dress with a shawl collar. Alright, so let's get started. For this class, here are the material you're going to be needing. You need your fabric, your lining, your interfacing, and also I'll be using satin for the collar part. You can use the same fabric if you want. So the first thing is to fuse the fabric and the lining with the stay. And then you fold your fabric into two. I'm going to be drafting the back first. So for the back, I first rule my guideline, then I measure my zip allowance. After which I drafted the back pattern using a shoulder that method. I already illustrated how you can do this last week. Please kindly watch the video. The link is in the description box. Alright, for the neck width, I made the neck width to be 3 inches and then the neck depth is 0 0.5. Then I connect it together like this. Then after that, you cut it out. Alright, so moving on, we're going to be drafting the front now. For the front, the first step is to measure five inches downward from the starting point measure five inches downward then you roll it then again from the beginning of the fabric like this you measure two inches then you roll it as well this is going to be the extension for the lapel then after that you measure your button stand the button stand is 1.5 inch so just measure the one and a half inch and then you rule it as well all right so when this is done the next thing now is to draft the front pattern starting from the line that you rule so what i'll just do is to fold those lines away then I'll fold the upper part away as well so that I can just draft the front pattern. And I've also explained how you can draft this in the last week series. So just draft your pattern. You can do any that you like. But for this, I just uh, make use of a shoulder that which I've already explained to you how you can go about it last week. So you may want to watch that video. Alright, so when you're done, the neck width is still going to be 3 inches just like the back, but the neck depth is going to be 3 inches for the front. Remember, we used 0.5 for the back neck depth, but for the front, it's going to be 3 inches by 3 inches. Then you connect the points together this way. Alright, so when this is done, then you unfold the parts that you folded inward. Can you see so we are going I'm going to be illustrating how you're going to go about the short collar now like I said earlier you can use any pattern of your shirt so the first thing is to grab the back then you measure the neck starting from the neck width to where your zipper allowance starts you just measure whatever measurement you have here I have 3.2 So you, you now place the tape measure like I'm showing you and you measure the 3.2 upward this way, adding 0.5 inch allowance to it. So instead of measuring 3.2, you measure 3.7. Depends on whatever measurement you get while measuring yours. So you just extend it. Then from that line, you, you reverse the line by half inch just the way I'm showing you here. Hope it's clear. If you have any question, please kindly leave it in the comment section. I will reply. Alright, so when that is done, the next thing is to determine the breaking point of the lapel. Alright, so I'm, I'm going to be making the breaking point to be on the nipple point. So don't forget, this is the button stand. The button stand is 1.5 inches. This line here is the button stand. So... I'll just extend the nipple points to that line and then I'm going to go back to the neck uh, depth and I'm going to extend it to the beginning of the fabric this way. So from this point now, I'm going to come down by half inch. Just 
just half inch half so you blend it back to the neck like this then from the bottom stand on the nipple point i'll connect it this way hope it's clear please if you have any question kindly leave it in the comment section All right, so the next thing is to go back to the color part. From where your line stop, this line here, you measure four inches inward like this, touching the beginning of the fabric this way. Then you connect it together. That's the width of the color. Then from that point, you use the curve part of your ruler and connect it to this point here you can see the button stand connect it there like so if you want it to roll smoothly without having a separate lapel from this uh, point here you just connect it directly to that extension here like from here to here all right so after drafting i just place the lining on top of the main fabric then I use it to cut it out. But before then, at the side seam, you come up by one inch so that you can blend it to the uh, that leg like so. This is just to allow the uh, the dress to sit very well on our body because the back length is sixteen, while the front length is seventeen. All right. So after that, you cut it out. So after cutting it out, it looks like this. So this part here on the lining, we are going to be replacing it with fabric. This part here on the lining, you are going to replace it with fabric. But then I'm just going to be replacing it with uh, satin. So you place it with your fabric because that part is going to reverse back to the right side after sewing so you need to replace it with fabric you're not going to be using the lining part so i'm just going to use satin for that purpose but you can use the same fabric like they use in the picture all right so i just placed the lining on top of my satin my satin is already fused with stay as you can see so i just place it and then i'll cut it out All right, so I've cut it out. So I will discard the lining, that part, I no longer need it. So if you open it up, it's going to look like this. So this is now going to be the lining piece. We have two side panels and then we have two center panels. All right, so for the main fabric, this is how it looks. We have two center panels and also two side panels as well. So for the back, just place the pattern you already drafted on the lining on top of the main fabric and then you cut it out. All right, so after cutting it out, the box looks like this. Just the way it is on the lining, that's how it is on the main fabric as well. All right, so moving on, we're going to be drafting the sleeve. I already folded my fabric into four diagonally like a triangle, as you can see. So I first look for the point where I can get my hand all with my allowance. Then I rolled it. After which I measure my cap height upward from the line. My cap height is 5 inches. So I measure 5 inches upward from the line. Then I get my ham oak off this way. Then I 
Then from the cap height, I measured the length of the sleeve. I used 11 inches with the allowance. So, and I went back to the tip of the triangle and I measured down to where I have my 11 inches points. Then I rotate my answer. Then after that, I cut it out. Alright, so moving on, the next thing now is to cut out the down part of my dress. The total length of my gown is 42 inches. And then from my shoulder to my waist length is 17 inches. So I'm going to subtract the 17 inches from the 42 inches. So whatever the answer is, that's going to be the length for the down part. And then the width is going to be three times my waist circumference. So after cutting that out, it's just one long uh, strip that measured the remaining length of your gown then the width is three times your waist circumference so after cutting it out you will now divide it into two one will be for the front and then the other will be for the back then the front again you're going to slit it into two because the front of the dress is going to have opening so you're going to slit the front the one that is for the front you're going to slit it into two all right So after that, the next thing is just to notch the place where your pocket is going to sit. This, the pocket is going to sit two inches below the starting point of the, of the fabric. Alright, so we are going to be sewing our gown now. And I'm starting with the back part. You can see this is the lining for the back. So we have two center piece and two side piece. So what I'll do now is to take the two center piece, I'll place them right side to right side and I'm going to join them on the zip allowance part since there'll be no zip, allow, uh, there'll be no zip. So we are sewing the back close, you can see. So the next thing is to, to join the side panels together as well. So place the right side of the side panel on the center piece just the way i'm showing you and then you're going to sew it together then you take the other side and then you sew it together as well after which you will notch and then you repeat the same thing to the fabric you can see this is the main fabric i've joined it the way i've shown you on the lining and after joining if the side piece is not equal with the center piece maybe it's like quarter inch difference you can trim it but if it's more than like quarter inch just know that you're not doing something right so you have to lose it and join it back again all right but if it's just this little tiny piece you can just trim it off all right so i've joined the main fabric and i've also joined the lining and i've notched and iron it open all right so i'll keep that aside and i'll take the front so this is the main fabric for the front and we have four pieces as well. We have two center piece and then two side piece. So what I'll do next is to place one side piece and one center piece together, right side facing each other and then I'll sew them together after which I will notch. Just notch your seam and press it open. You're going to repeat the same thing to the lining. You can see this is the, the lining. We cut the center piece with satin, of which I've told you earlier that you can also cut this with the main fabric. And then this is the side piece. And then this is the second side piece. Alright, so you're going to join them together just the same way you join the main fabric. You take one side piece, place it on top of the center piece, right side facing each other and then you join. Alright, so I'm done joining it together. And this is how it looks. After joining, you have to press the seam open. 
then after that you place the lining together on top of each other and the main fabric also on top of each other like this the four of them together so the point where the shoulder connects with the collar you are going to notch it just notch half inch you can see just notch it you can see exactly half inch so that it can be easy for you to sew it that's the essence of that notching all right so when that is done you take the two lining piece place them on top of each other right side facing each other just place it on top of each other right side to right side and then you join them together on the collar part with half inch seam allowance And when you're done with that, you take the main fabric as well. Don't forget, we are still working with the front. So you take the main fabric as well. You join it together, right side facing each other. You join with half inch seam allowance on the collar part. So if you open it, it's going to look like this. Alright, so when that is done, the next thing now is to join the front to the back. So this is the right side of the back that is on the machine. So you place the right side of the front on top of it. And that part that you join together at the collar part, you can see, you match the seam allowance together with the center back. And then you pin it. So you are going to pin it to the right and then you pin it to the left. So when you're done pinning, starting from one tip of the shoulder, you're going to sew it across to the neckline till you get back to the second shoulder tip. So when you are done joining it together, you are going to notch. It's very important so that you can relax. So after joining both the front and the back together on the neckline, it's going to look like this. So you are going to repeat the same thing to the lining. You join both the front and the back together on the neck part. You can see this is how it's going to look after joining. The essence of the notching is just for it to relax and look smooth from the right side. Can you see? If you're using shoulder that ensure both the back uh, shoulder that and um, front shoulder that is aligning properly. So I just repeat the same step on the lining. Alright, so I'm done joining it together on the lining. So the next thing now is to place the right side of the lining together with the right side of the main fabric. And then you match the joining on the neck parts together. You align that collar, you align it together like this. And then you pin it. So from that point, you pin it to the right and then you pin it to the left till you get to the uh, center front. 
like this. Let's do this on the floor so that you can understand it better. All right, so this is the lining piece and then the right side is facing up and then this is the main fabric. You match the right side of the lining together with the right side of the of the main fabric and then you align them together at the center of the neckline the center of the neckline at the back so from that point you're going to pin it all the way to the waistline in front can you see like this then from the center of the neckline again you you pin it to the right all the way to the waistline so you now take to the sewing machine starting from the waistline you sew it across through the neckline then so you get back to the other waistline like this then after that you notch notching is very important so that it can relax and look smooth from the right side all right so when you're done sewing it from the neck the next thing now is to join the side seam together so just the way I'm showing you, you just use the lining to turn the side seam. So you join both the lining and the main fabric together with half inch seam allowance. Then after that, you can bring it to the right side and then you press it. All right, so I'm going to keep that aside and work on the sleeve. So this is the sleeve. We have two pieces for the sleeve. So the next thing now is to M the lower part of the sleeve. So you are going to be creating elastic casing at the M. So I'm going to be using half inch elastic. So ensure the the folding you're going to do at the hem is going to contain your elastic all right so after creating the elastic casing you insert your elastic at the hem and then it's going to look like this so the next thing now is to attach the sleeve to the main body so this is our dress and this is the neckline. So the next thing is to fix your sleeve to the arm hole. Alright, so I notch the center of the sleeve, then I match the center of the sleeve at the center of the shoulder. Then I sew it to the left and also sew it to the right. And then after fixing the sleeve, this is how it looks. So the next thing now is to close the side. So you're going to be taking your measurement starting from the center of the, the center of the back. So from the center, you measure quarter of your bust measurements on the ham O. Then on the waistline, you measure quarter of your waist measurements. Then you connect it together. Then to the other side, from the center of the, you measure the quarter of your bust measurement again. And the quarter of your waist measurement on the waistline as well. Then you connect it together. Then you sew the side close.
all right so after closing the side this is how it looks so the next thing now is to attach the down part all right so if you're putting pocket on yours just like i'm putting on mine so the first thing is to attach the pocket so the right side of your pocket will be facing the right side of the fabric and then you're going to sew from the point where you have your notching and then you do the same thing for the four sides all right so i'm done fixing the pocket so the next thing now is to close the side of the down part so you can see this is how it looks so you you place the front part on top of it like this and then you're going to close the side with half inch seam allowance so when you get to the pockets you keep the needle in and then you rotate the fabric and then you sew along till you get back to the fabric and then you continue to you sew it close all the way to the end of the dress when one side is done you repeat the same thing to the second side and after that you're going to end the bottom part of the dress Alright, so the next thing now is to attach the bottom part to the upper part. So, first thing is to note the side seam. The side seam, you are going to pin it together. The side seam of the bottom part and the side seam of the upper part, you pin it together. This is the second side seam and then you mash it together like so and pin after which you are going to pleat the reason for pinning the side seam is just for the pocket to sit well you don't want it to shift so you want the pocket to be at the side seam so you have to pin then after which you pleat the excess So before you finish, you leave like half inch. You can see you leave half inch before you start and then half inch before you finish. So what you're going to do next is to use the lining to turn it. So place the lining on top of it the way I'm showing you and then you're going to place the lining as well. And when that is done, that half inch that you left, you're going to sew the center front close together with the lining with that half inch. And you're done with one side, you go back and do the same thing to the second side. Alright, so when all of that is done, the next thing is just to iron it and then you mark the position of your button hole and your button. Alright, so from my waistline, I just measured 3 inches upward. That is where the first button and button hole is going to be. And from there, I just keep uh, the distance between each button is uh, 4 4 inches. So you can just determine whichever one you want, all the pains on your preference. And that's it. That's the end of today's class. I'll see you next week. Bye.